Welcome to the know, I'm Mika Burton. And I'm Gus Sirola. It's been just over a week since the Nintendo Switch came out, and it's certainly been a bipolar one. One moment we're hearing that it's the most successful launch for Nintendo system of all time. Yay. And the next we're hearing about people having technical issues with the system itself. Boo. Uh, and now Nintendo's finally responding to the various complaints we've seen online by definitively saying there's nothing wrong with the Switch. And that's going to go over so well. Plus, we've got some more information about why some multi-platform Switch games are turning out to be more expensive than they are in competing consoles. But first, Nintendo's insistence that the Switch doesn't have any widespread technical problems. This news comes from a statement released by Nintendo over the weekend. They sent it as a follow-up to an interview with company COO Reggie fils in which Reggie discussed some of the vocal and viral complaints surrounding the Switch. Things like the Joy-Con having desync problems, the screen scratching easily on the dock, etc. Nintendo's statement reads, it is common with any new innovative consumer technology for consumers to have questions, and Nintendo Switch is no exception. There are no widespread technical problems, and all issues are being handled promptly, including the reports regarding the left Joy-Con Bluetooth connection. Statement goes on to say, to best support our customers, we continuously update the online consumer support site and provide real-time answers to the questions we are receiving. The company then insists that if you run into any issue that detracts from the experience, you should contact their customer support team. The statement of course, follows somewhat similar comments that fils may had already made to Time Magazine about some of the concerns raised during the Switch's launch. Reggie said, specifically on Joy-Con syncing, all I can tell you is that we are aware of and have seen some of the reports. We're asking consumers a lot of questions. That's why we want to get consumers on our helpline so we can get as much information to understand the situation as possible. He went on to say, and so we're in a fact-finding mode to really understand the situation and the scenarios. And with that information, we'll look and see what the next steps are. Apparently, Reggie asked multiple teams within Nintendo if they've experienced anything similar to the issues being reported, and the teams within Nintendo have said no. Still, he said he's ordered them to find out more information about what's happening. He's ordered them. He's on it. <laughs> so it's nice to hear that they are seeing these reports and taking them seriously. But it might not sit too well with some people for Nintendo to straight up say that there aren't any technical issues. We are perfect. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Obviously, there's no telling if any of the issues being reported are widespread or not by simply browsing the internet, because if you listen to places like Reddit, the sky is falling. <laughs> uh, plus, Nintendo has more access to that data than we would, and a few angry voices even hundreds of angry voices are minuscule compared to the hundreds of thousands of units that are already out there. For one, we all know that it's easier for bad experiences to rise to the top on the internet. All it takes is a few viral posts to sour a product or game launch in the eyes of many who aren't actually holding it in their hands. Nintendo knows this too, which is why they're trying to tell consumers that there's nothing to worry about for the moment. Whether or not these issues are actually widespread, what matters to Nintendo is that people think they are. And while they're trying to change a story to be about the launch, they're also trying to discern how big of a deal this actually is. The last thing anybody wants when they launch a console is a red ring of death situation like Microsoft had with the Xbox 360. But we've also seen it with a few other product launches like the iPhone 4, which gained a bad reputation for dropping calls, which turned out not to be as big of a deal as people first made it out to be, Surprise, surprise. Uh, public perception is a hard thing to break and it makes all the difference when trying to sell your product. You want the narrative to be, this thing is so amazing and you can't find it anywhere, rather than it doesn't work and people are having problems. Uh, it doesn't take long at all for that second one to go around, especially when any idiot can post video of themselves bloodying their fingers while messing with a Joy-Con. Or Ouch. shoving a Joy-Con up their ass, which people are doing. I'll put it back. <laughs> it's got haptic rumble, HD rumble. <laughs> In addition to some alleged hardware complaints, gamers have also been voicing some concerns about the price points for some of the Switch's platform games. Both Rhyme and Puyo Puyo Tetris have been revealed to cost more on the Switch than they do on their other console counterparts. Rhyme, for instance, costs $10 more on the Switch than on Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Hmm. Uh, fortunately, Eurogamers got the scoop about some of those price differences. According to Eurogamer, the cartridges for the Switch cost more to produce than discs, which is resulting in a higher price. Uh, you think that would mean they could discount the titles on Nintendo's eShop, but the problem for publishers and Nintendo is that if they lower them digitally, they might get some backlash from retailers. To make matters worse, the size of the cartridge apparently significantly affects the cost of the game as well, going up as the cartridges get bigger. And as a result, smaller publishers and developers seem to be opting to release their games digitally and skipping retail altogether in order to keep the price of their games down. If you're an old man like me, you remember this happened with the SNES and this happened with the N64. RAM chips were just more expensive and the more they needed to put in the cartridge, the more it costs. That's why we switched to discs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
While this doesn't seem like a huge issue at the moment, it's definitely one that could affect the Switch long term if Nintendo can't get it sorted out. They already have a fight on their hands to get third party publishers over to their system in general, but having some of those games cost more isn't going to help consumers actually purchase them. Just chalk it up to another issue the Switch is going to have to overcome. So welcome to the party, Nintendo. What do you guys think of Nintendo's statements about the Switch's technical issues? Let us know in the comments. For future updates on the Switch, remember to like this video and subscribe to the know. Hold on, let me simulate that statement for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In, any innovative new technology, consumers have questions. D translation, yeah. we're smart, you're dumb. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the note, I'm Mika Burton. <laughs> yeah? I was expecting yeah? Ashley Jenkins.